In the present day, no one looks at the sun and sees a dying star. But following billions of years of nuclear fusion, our star will expand, collapse, and fade through eras of transformation and catastrophe. This is 7 billion years of stellar death, focusing on our solar system's central furnace. In the 21st century, the sun is a middle-aged star burning hydrogen in its core. Humans who observe it see stability, a yellow dwarf that has powered life on Earth for 4.6 billion years. Most of them assume it will shine forever. This is all about the change. The sun is slowly getting brighter. Every billion years, its luminosity increases by about 10%. According to astrophysical models, this gradual brightening will accelerate over the coming billion years, transforming Earth from a habitable world into a scorched wasteland. At first, the changes will be subtle. But after crossing certain thresholds, the sun will fundamentally alter the fate of every planet in the solar system. Around 1 billion years from now, the sun's luminosity will have increased by 10% from present levels. It was a time of transformation. How would Earth respond to the intensifying radiation? The question of planetary survival will continue to be a central theme in the solar system throughout the ages. The increased solar output triggers a runaway greenhouse effect. Water vapor, a potent greenhouse gas, accumulates in the atmosphere as the oceans begin to evaporate. The feedback loop accelerates. More evaporation leads to more warming, which leads to more evaporation. During this period, Earth's hydrological cycle breaks down completely, and the oceans disappear. The continents transform into salt flats and deserts. Temperatures at the equator regularly exceed 60 degrees Celsius, hot enough to denature proteins and make the surface uninhabitable for complex life. Photosynthesis, the process that has sustained Earth's biosphere for billions of years, collapses. Plants cannot extract enough carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, and oxygen production ceases. Scientific consensus considers this epoch as the end of Earth's habitability. However, it is characterized by extreme geological upheaval, and the planet's surface becomes unrecognizable. In particular, tension mounts around the question of whether subsurface life could survive in underground aquifers or near the poles. In 5 billion years from now, the sun exhausts the hydrogen fuel in its core. The central fusion reactor that has maintained stellar equilibrium for billions of years shuts down. This marks the transformation from main sequence star to red giant, a transformation that will reshape the inner solar system. As the core collapses under its own gravity, temperatures rise. Hydrogen fusion ignites a shell surrounding the now inert helium core. The energy released is enormous, far greater than during the main sequence phase. The sun's outer layers expand outward, driven by this shell-burning process. The sun grows to 100 times its original radius. Its surface temperature drops to around 3,000 Kelvin, giving it a dull red color. Mercury, the innermost planet, is consumed by the expanding stellar atmosphere. Venus follows. Earth's fate hangs in the balance. On the other hand, astronomers calculating the sun's mass loss suggest that Earth's orbit may expand outward as the sun sheds material. If Earth survives, its surface will be heated to 1,500 degrees Celsius, hot enough to melt rock. The planet becomes a lava world orbiting inside the sun's extended atmosphere. In time, the gravitational dynamics will determine whether Earth spirals into the sun or escapes to a more distant orbit. The debate over Earth's ultimate fate remains one of the most contested questions in stellar evolution models. Around 5 billion years from now, pressure and temperature in the sun's core reach 100 million degrees Celsius. The helium that is accumulated from billions of years of hydrogen fusion is ready to ignite. But the conditions are unusual. The core is electron degenerate, meaning the electrons are packed so tightly they resist further compression. In this degenerate state, the helium ignites explosively in what is called the helium flash. The core releases energy equivalent to the luminosity of 100 billion suns, but only for a few seconds. This is not a supernova. The energy goes into lifting the crushing weight of the sun's outer layers, and the star settles into a new equilibrium. The helium flash, though visible from the outside, represents a fundamental shift in the sun's structure. The core now fuses helium into carbon and oxygen, while hydrogen continues to burn in a shell above it. The sun contracts slightly and stabilizes, entering the horizontal branch phase. 
This period of relative calm lasts for about 100 million years. The sun is still a red giant, but its luminosity stabilizes at a lower level than during the peak of the red giant expansion. Planets in the outer solar system, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, experience dramatic increases in temperature. Their icy moons begin to thaw. In 6 billion years from now, the sun's helium core is exhausted. A core of carbon and oxygen remains, surrounded by shells of helium and hydrogen fusion. The sun enters the asymptomatic giant branch, AGB phase, a period of extreme instability. The sun begins to pulse. Every 100,000 years, the helium shell accumulates enough helium ash to reignite explosively in a thermal pulse. Each pulse ejects material from the outer layers, causing the sun to expand further. The sun reaches 200 times its original radius, large enough that the Earth's former orbit is now deep within the stellar atmosphere. The AGB phase is characterized by massive mass loss. The sun sheds material at a rate of one Earth mass every 30,000 years. Solar winds blow at speeds of 20 to 30 kilometers per second, carrying dust and gas into interstellar space. The dust forms a thick cocoon around the star, making it appear dim and heavily obscure. Finally, in the mid-seventh billion year, the thermal pulses become so violent that the sun can no longer hold its outer layers. The entire stellar atmosphere is ejected into space. Out of the chaos of the AGB phase, the planetary nebula emerges. The sun expels its outer layers in a series of shells that expand at tens of kilometers per second. These shells are ionized by intense ultraviolet radiation from the now exposed core, causing them to glow in brilliant colors. The period of the planetary nebula lasts only 10,000 to 50,000 years, a brief moment in cosmic time. The nebula expands to light year scales before dispersing into the interstellar medium. The ejected material will eventually be incorporated into new generations of stars and planets. The planetary nebula serves as the final artistic flourish of a dying star. Observers from distant star systems would see an intricate structure. Rings, jets, and lobes carved by magnetic fields and previous mass ejections. The colors are vivid. Red from hydrogen, green from oxygen, blue from ionized helium. At the center of the nebula sits a tiny, intensely hot object, the white dwarf remnant of the sun. The leadership of white dwarf remnant lasts for trillions of years. Immediately following the ejection of the planetary nebula, the core of the sun is revealed a white dwarf with about half the sun's original mass, compressed into a sphere the size of Earth. The white dwarf has a surface temperature of 100,000 degrees Celsius, making it shine with harsh blue-white light. But there is no fusion, no nuclear reactions generate new energy. The white dwarf is simply radiating away the thermal energy stored during billions of years of stellar evolution. The white dwarf serves as a cosmic ember, slowly cooling over unimaginable timescales. Its density is extreme. One teaspoon of white dwarf material weighs five tons. The matter is electron degenerate, held up not by thermal pressure, but by quantum mechanical effects. As the white dwarf cools, its interior crystallizes. Carbon and oxygen atoms arrange themselves into a lattice structure. The sun's core becomes a giant diamond. This crystallization process releases a small amount of latent heat, briefly slowing the cooling rate. But alongside this crystallization, the white dwarf continues to fade. After 1 billion years, its surface temperature drops to 10,000 degrees Celsius. After 10 billion years, it becomes a dim red ember. The white dwarf will take more than 100 billion years, longer than the current age of the universe, to cool to the temperature of the cosmic microwave background. At the final stage, after trillions of years, the white dwarf completes its cooling process and becomes a black dwarf a cold, dark sphere of crystallized carbon and oxygen. No light is emitted, no heat radiates, the object is invisible except through its gravitational influence. The black dwarf, though theoretical, no black dwarfs yet exist in the universe as insufficient time has passed, represents the ultimate fate of all low-mass stars. It is a stellar corpse, a monument to entropy and the arrow of time. In the far future, even the black dwarf may not be stable. Proton decay, if it occurs, would gradually disintegrate the black dwarf over timescales of 10 to the 32nd years. Alternatively, quantum tunneling processes might convert the carbon and oxygen into iron over 10 to the 1500 years, though this is beyond any practical conception of time. 
Some physicists speculate that random quantum fluctuations could eventually cause the black dwarf to collapse into a black hole, but the timescales involved, 10 to the 10 to the 26 years, are so vast that they defy comprehension. This indicates the ultimate fate of matter in a cooling, expanding universe, where even the remnants of stars succumb to quantum uncertainties and the relentless increase of entropy. So there you have it. That's how the sun dies. The journey from main sequence star to black dwarf spans timescales that dwarf human history, and indeed dwarf the history of complex life on Earth. The sun's death is not a sudden catastrophe, but a gradual transformation through multiple phases, each governed by the interplay of gravity, nuclear fusion, and thermodynamics. When you look at the sun today, you're seeing a star in its prime, steadily burning hydrogen, providing the energy that makes life on Earth possible. But that stability is temporary. The sun is mortal. It will exhaust its fuel, expand, collapse, and fade, leaving behind only a dark, crystalline remnant in a cold and empty universe. The question of what happens to humanity during this process remains unanswered. Will we colonize other star systems? Will we engineer solutions to survive the sun's transformation? Or will we be long extinct, our civilizations forgotten, our monuments eroded, our stories lost to time. The sun doesn't care. It will follow the laws of physics, as all stars do, through the inevitable arc of stellar evolution. And in the end, nothing remains but a frozen diamond, drifting silently through the void, a gravestone marking where something remarkable once burned.